Why did a group of young Orthodox men take it upon themselves to dig a tunnel? I'm gonna do my best to sum this up as quickly as I can, so wish me luck. These men were members of Chabad, a Hasidic Orthodox movement whose world headquarters are very famously at 770 Eastern Parkway in Crown Heights in Brooklyn. Chabad used to have a leader named Menachem M. Schneerson, but he's mostly just known as the Rebbe. The Rebbe died in 1996, and since then, there has been no central leader appointed. I cannot overstate just how much so many people within Chabad adored and still adore this man. So much so that there is a rift within the group where some people believe that he is the Messiah. This is extremely controversial both within Chabad and the larger Jewish world in general. And I believe even official Chabad documentation does not subscribe to this belief. Now, 30 years ago, the Rebbe said at some point that he would like to see 770 Eastern Parkway expanded, probably because there are so many people that want to pray there and there just isn't enough room. But he died six years later before anything could happen. And since then, there have been court battles over who officially owns the building, meaning that the expansion can't happen for that reason, but also because they don't own the buildings that surround it, or at least the building that they would need to expand into. The guys that were digging this tunnel are apparently considered by much of Chabad to be messianic extremists. At least one said that he believed he was doing the bidding of the late Rebbe, who he considers the Messiah, and that they had a divine responsibility to be doing this. Some even said that they believed that by digging this tunnel, they would be ushering in his return, which is why they acted so extremely when the guys with the cement came, jumping into the tunnel to prevent them from plugging it up, and then doing all other types of shenanigans, like tearing apart parts of the walls of the synagogue in order to prevent them from finishing the cement job. I think most likely the tunnel thing had a double purpose as well because this particular group of students is not allowed upstairs in the headquarters. And so some people say they were doing this literally to carve out their own space. It should be noted that as Chabadniks themselves have said, this entire thing is a product of its leadership issues and the fact that there is so much divisiveness within this community, which of course isn't helping in getting one normal, final, solid story as to what is happening. We're really not sure how long they've been doing this, but they obviously did not care about the cleanliness of the space and used it to throw away various household items. Why might they have a high chair? Because people have children in this community very, very young, around the age of a lot of these young men. And a lot of random things get stored in basements. Young children in the Chabad community are also exceedingly common. Were they taking them into the tunnel? No. Why did they have a dirty mattress? For any reason that anybody would have a dirty mattress. There is no more reason to think that that stain is blood than literally any other material. Sweat. Drool food spillage, other gross things. I'm not there, I can't smell it, and neither can you. They, like any other young men, most other young men, did not keep this place clean and did not, were not thinking about that. But more than anything, there is absolutely zero evidence whatsoever of anybody being kidnapped or hurt in this stupid tunnel. But weren't they going to go spy on the women's baths? No. This rumor is a combination of two things. One is that their tunnel went towards the former men's ritual bath. And two, that it went underneath the women's shul or the women's like synagogue. But yeah, certainly no ladies or spying on ladies going on down there. But this doesn't mean that no one got hurt. They endangered their community. They endangered their neighbors. They didn't have the proper permits, of course, which we all know by now you have to have if you're going to build a tunnel. This place is very sacred to many people, and these events have caused a lot of distress within the Chabad community. And of course, now we have to hear about it from every anti-Semite on the internet. The Jews are in our basements. They're drinking children's blood. Somebody commented on my video bringing up Simon of Trent from 500 years ago? The ancient blood libel conspiracy, like V1? These are some truly ancient dusty ass conspiracy theories. It is truly banana. For the New Yorker community, of which I was spawned, and for the Jewish community in general, this on its own would be pretty funny. And it, it is, it's pretty funny. It should just be this funny, odd thing. And beyond being held accountable for hurting the structural integrity of an important building, that should be it. <laughs> Unfortunately, I haven't gotten the chance to sit back and laugh about it 
too much yet because of the wild amount of anti-Semitic conspiracy theories that are being thrown every single which way. Of course, there are the regular MAGA neo yazi assholes coming out the wazoo. But then something especially dangerous is that a lot of these assholes have taken on pro-Palestinian talking points in order to gain hundreds of thousands of new followers on Twitter, for example. Many who are people that I think should know better. As someone who has, with my whole chest, been supporting the pro-Palestine movement for years, it makes me so angry to see people pretend to care about Palestinian lives when they clearly just don't like Jews. This is how the movement is broken down from the inside. The Israeli government would like nothing more than for there to be a rise in anti-Semitism so that they can pretend to be the only safe place in the world for Jews. Of course, the main fault, as always, lies at the feet of the evil and horrific genocidal terrorists that make up the Israeli government, who tell blatant and obvious lie after lie kill thousands and thousands of innocent people and then say that they're doing it on the behalf of Jews or for Jewish safety, when in reality, as a group, we didn't vote them in. Of course, there is so much more to get into. Like every QAnon child trafficking conspiracy theory, as experts will say, there are so many real-life examples of actual predators and abusers and traffickers active right now that one could actually go after and real victims, not made-up ones, that you could actually try to get justice for. There are also many real fair criticisms that one can make about Chabad as a group and an organization, but having a secret bloodletting room in 770 Easter Parkway just isn't one of them.